Hi, this is Scott from Chino Basin Water Conservation District here in the WaterWise Community Center Demonstration Garden, continuing our series on summer dormancy in California native plants in the garden. Today I'm here with my friend California Sagebrush, Artemisia californica, one of the iconic plants of Southern California. It's also one that goes either semi-dormant or semi-summer dormant, as you can see right here. This section of the garden receives a good deep soak about every three weeks during the summer, which is very common for what we would suggest for most California native gardens in this area. If we didn't water it at all, this established plant would live, but it would defoliate or lose its leaves even more in the summer. At every three weeks, it goes through sort of its natural cycle where it looks much more sparse in the summer, but that little bit of hydration does keep it having a little bit more foliage, reduces the fire hazard danger a bit as well by keeping hydration in the biomass and gives us a look that can be anticipated to be something like this. What we do see is that younger California sagebrush plants as they're being established do tend to go a little bit less summer dormant, grow a little bit more through the summer, so you might not get this during year one or two, but certainly as the plant becomes more established, if you are going to be growing it in your yard, this is about what to expect. The leaves might turn a little bit yellowish like they do here. They might stay more of that silver color. There definitely is a range. And depending on where it is in the garden, how much sun it gets, the exact amount of dormancy might be greater or less. But I did want to show you this to know what to expect. Oftentimes people, even if they like the plant, might not like the look of how dormant the species gets. I tend to not mind it at all. But if you want it in your yard and you want to avoid the dormancy being front and center, it's big enough as a shrub, and if allowed to, it can get even a little taller than this, that you can put it a little bit more in the background or sort of the middle ground and not right up in front in the garden, which is something that sometimes people will do with Artemisia californica. I tend to actually like to keep it a little bit closer to the edge of the pathway because even when it's in this dormant state, it is still doing a lot in the garden. And one of my favorite things that it's doing is it continues to smell amazing all season long. And on a particularly hot day, that scent even lingers in the air a little bit more. So although it might not look bright and perky, it's still an absolute pleasure to have in the garden. A couple more things to consider related to this plant in the summer. We mentioned that we water this every three weeks. With some of our California native plants that experience dormancy or semi-dormancy, by bumping up the water a little bit more, maybe to every other week, you can keep them looking brighter and perkier. For California sagebrush, however, that would probably not be great for the long-term health of the plant because it is adapted to quite dry areas and through going through this natural cycle, so I wouldn't really recommend it for this species. However, if you love the idea of having California sagebrush in your garden but are looking for maybe a way to skip that dormancy a little bit, there are a couple of common cultivars of California sagebrush that you can get that tend in our gardens not to go as dormant. Those are both more ground cover or semi-ground cover cultivars. The most common of those is California gray sagebrush, which is going to be about knee high and up to eight to 10 feet wide. It does take pruning, but you really need to give it some space. And that will go a little bit semi-dormant, but not nearly as much. And my favorite cultivar, which is not as commonly available, unfortunately, but I absolutely love, is one called Montera sagebrush. And that one is more of a mounding variety. Either of those, either in full sun, but especially if you can place them somewhere where they get some afternoon shade, are going to look much better as a foliage plant for a conventional aesthetic throughout much of the warm season. This video is just one part of our summer dormancy series. If you haven't seen the full playlist already, be sure to check it out to understand how to get the most out of your summer California native garden. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications to not miss out on any of our upcoming videos.